Let the bell bring you into the space of the body. We begin with the preparation. So really take your time to go through the whole process of settling body, speech and mind in their natural state. Letting go of tension. Becoming grounded and stable. Let the back be straight but not tense. Let every point of the posture be done without any trans in intention, without any forcefulness. Be gentle, natural. And simply create the space, the good foundation for the practice. Any tightness that you notice, just breathe it out, let it go, release it into space. Allow your body to relax. And then bring the mind to the breath for a moment to complete this preparation, synchronizing body and mind in a state of calmness, being relaxed, natural.
And now let go of the breath and the physical sensations. Let go of any object. Let go of any action. And simply rest the mind in stillness. Simply noticing the fact that you are aware. And from that stillness, you can then bring your attention to the rising of thoughts within the mind, without following them, without grasping into thoughts, but simply observing them as they appear and dissolve, as they come and go. Without clinging to them, just observe.
And if you notice that you're getting caught up in thoughts, that you're becoming distracted, then you can go back to the stillness, to observing awareness and resting in that state. And in the corner of your mind, simply keeping the thoughts present, noticing that they're still there. Just abiding with the awareness. Or if you notice that you're becoming dull and sleepy, then you can emphasize the attention more on the thoughts, on the mental events flowing and passing. And if you feel completely lost in the practice, then simply go back to the sensations in the body related to the breath. When in the corner of your mind, keeping pressing the thoughts and the awareness. going back to it if you feel like it.
And every now and then, using introspection, check the body and the mind. Take a moment to take care of the body. Going back to the posture once again. This time we'll do a meditation contemplating on uh, basically the precious human life that we have. Appreciating this human life, which is basically one of the causes that we have to practice all these spiritual teachings. So find yourself in a comfortable position again. (laughs) 
letting the bell ring into the space of the body gently landing on this realm of physical sensations give yourself the time to really prepare the body for the practice by cultivating once again this natural state of relaxation stillness and alertness taking three deep breaths, inhaling fully and completely and letting go, releasing the breath gently and naturally breathing in fully and letting go of all tension, of all worries and concerns Breathing in, feeling the lungs to their full capacity. And then gently letting go, relaxing. And stabilizing and grounding yourself. Let the body rest, let the mind accompany, just observe the breath for a few rounds in order to complete this preparation. When your mind is calm and settled in the here and now, you can gently let go of the breath and the physical sensations. Reinforce and generate a positive altruistic motivation for doing the practice. You can simply think, for example, may this meditation bring greater peace and happiness to myself and to others to the whole world so we begin this meditation by contemplating that the nature of your mind is clear and pure it has the potential to become enlightened a state of complete purity goodness and perfection This is true for yourself and all other beings.
The nature of every being's mind is clear like space, vast and unlimited. Our negative thoughts and emotions are not permanent, they're not fixed parts of the mind, but are transient like clouds that pass through the sky. And because they are based on ignorance and misconceptions, they can be cleared away and the mind can be developed to a state that is completely pure and positive. And if you find it difficult <clears throat> to accept that the mind has the potential to become enlightened, you can think of the positive qualities that you have. Intelligence, loving-kindness, compassion, generosity, courage. And simply remind yourself that this can be developed even further. That you can use your life to bring benefit and happiness to others. So try to feel joyful about the potential that lies within you. And although all beings have the potential to transform their mind and become enlightened, not all beings are in the most ideal situation in which they can recognize and develop this potential. Human beings are generally in the best situation. Non-human beings either have too much suffering or are incapable of developing their potential due to ignorance and other delusions. Imagine what it would be like as an animal, for example. Animals in the wild have no one to care for them when they experience hunger, thirst, heat, cold, sickness or injuries. And they are almost in constant fear for their lives. They have to strive to get food find shelter, take care of their offspring. So much effort, with so little time left to do anything else. Domestic animals are sometimes better off, but lack the freedom. They are often killed for meat, fur, or other products. And all animals, even the most intelligent ones, have very extremely limited mental capacities, are unable to develop themselves intellectually or spiritually. Contemplate on this to get a sense of how fortunate you are to have a human life. However, not all human beings have the right conditions to recognize and develop their potential. Imagine, for example, being a destitute beggar or living in a war zone. Mm. 
most of your time and energy would be spent simply trying to keep yourself and your family alive. You would have little or no time to think about anything else, such as spiritual practice. Imagine suffering from a severe mental disability or illness, which would make it very difficult for you to understand the teachings and the mind's potential and how to develop it. Or imagine having a physical condition that caused you a great deal of pain or discomfort and that hindered your ability to learn and practice spiritual teachings. Some people do not have access to the teachings that explain the mind's potential. Imagine spending your entire life in a small, remote village where no one has even heard about enlightenment, so there is no opportunity to learn how to attain it. Other people may be aware of their potential and have a sincere wish to practice the teachings and how to develop it, but they are prevented from doing so by others. For example, people in some countries do not have the freedom of religion. Others have to face strong objections from their family members. Imagine yourself in such a situation, recognizing how difficult it would be, and really generate a sense of appreciation for the freedom that you currently have. Even the fact that you're here shows that you have a choice and an opportunity. Think of how many people in the world right now lack that freedom. Then there's many people who are physically and mentally healthy, who are materially well off, and have all the freedom and opportunity to learn the spiritual teachings. But they are simply not interested. Their interest lies elsewhere in accumulating wealth, property, and possessions, acquiring worldly knowledge or skills or simply experiencing as much pleasure as they can. They never consider that all of this will be left behind when they die, like a dream that vanishes as soon as we wake up, and that only their mind will continue to the next life. Some people engage in harmful actions, such as killing, stealing, being abusive or dishonest, not realizing that these actions cause suffering to themselves and to others, and create obstacles to discovering their true potential.
So recognize how fortunate you are to even have the slightest interest in enlightenment. And thinking about using your life in a meaningful, beneficial way for yourself and for others. Bringing your mind to the positive qualities and advantages you have. You're a human being with an intelligent mind, a loving heart, and a body that you can put to good use. There are people who care about you and support you. Family members, friends, spiritual teachers. You have opportunities to pursue your creative, intellectual and social interests. You enjoy a good standard of life. At least you have enough to stay alive. And most of all, you have the potential and opportunity because of all the other benefits to investigate, understand and transform your mind. Even if your life does not afford as much freedom and comfort as you would like, and even if you have to live with some very difficult problems and challenges, no matter where you are and what conditions you live in, you can always work on your mind. Think of how few people or creatures on this earth share these freedoms and chances with you. When you have considered this deeply, you will realize how rare and precious a life like yours really is. So appreciate your good fortune. Be joyful. And seeing the disadvantages your life is free of and the advantages that you enjoy, decide how best to use your precious opportunities. Think of all the possibilities open to you, work, travel, enjoyment, study. If you wish to offer service to others, there are countless opportunities to help those less fortunate than you. But the most meaningful and beneficial thing you can do, both for yourself and others, is to develop yourself spiritually, to overcome the negative aspects of your mind and increase the positive and actualizing your potential. See if you can feel a sense of joy and appreciation for the wonderful situation you have and resolve to use your life wisely, doing your best to avoid harming others and instead helping them as much as you can, developing love, compassion, wisdom and other positive qualities that will enable you to actualize your highest potential.